All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Fake Moves, the John Harvard Musical. Thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. We are so excited to share this with you. Um, my name is Sam Dvorak, and I'm the director of the show. My name is Andrew Van Camp, and I wrote the lyrics. My name is Victoria Gong, and I'm the book writer. And my name is Veronica Leahy, and I'm the composer Hello, and music producer for the show. And welcome to Fake, Fake Moves. Moves is the 25th annual Harvard College First Year Musical, a wholly original show created entirely by first year students. Everything you are about to see and hear has been developed and created by members of the class of 23. Before we begin, uh, I'd like to give you a little background on the story you are about to hear. The John Harvard statue in the center of Harvard Yard is one of the most photographed statues in the world. Every tour group on campus know here's the story of the statue's three lies. And if you aren't familiar, listen closely to the opening number. We know very little about the real John Harvard. We know he was a pastor in England and that he was married to a woman named Anne. Fleeing religious persecution, they moved to America in 1637, where Harvard quickly succumbed to tuberculosis. On his deathbed, he donated half of his estate to the nearby Newtown College, which renamed itself in honor of its most generous donor. This time period also saw the rise of Oliver Cromwell, a well-known figure in the English Civil War. Cromwell was a fervent believer of Puritan anti-art beliefs, and under his rule, theaters were closed down, much like they are today. So Sam just gave you a brief history lesson. How did that turn into a musical? Well, we kept thinking about the three lies. If you've ever been on a tour of the Harvard campus, you'll know everyone accepts that they're there, but this is bizarre if you keep thinking about it. Harvard is all about truth. Their motto, Veritas, literally means truth. So why, as a tour guide asks in the opening number, is the statue in the center of campus built on lies? You might think of this musical as a game. Your job as an audience member is to separate the truth from exaggerations and falsehoods sprinkled in. I certainly hope that after the show, you'll do a bit of research on the history and discover that some of the more outlandish pieces of our story are actually true or based on something true at any rate. We got increasingly excited about these ideas as we realized their resemblance to a debate playing out on the national stage related to truth and where people get their information from, hence the title. Many people have worked extremely hard on this show, and I am so glad that we will get to share it with you tonight. Seeing the music transform from half-baked voice memos of me and Andrew singing in one of the first year practice rooms in Harvard Yard to now hearing it fully orchestrated and recorded by our pit orchestra and our cast has been one of the most amazing experiences of my life. I want to quickly tell you all a bit about what went into this soundtrack and how we've adapted it to this new digital format. With support from the Office for the Arts at Harvard, who mailed microphones out to our cast, we were able to fully record the soundtrack from our own homes. I have been hard at work for the past few months orchestrating and mixing all of the parts so that you all at home can have the best listening experiences from your devices. It's crazy to think that we were able to remotely record an entire musical soundtrack, but it couldn't have been done without lots of teamwork and support. So I want to give a big thank you to Caleb Shi, who's our music director, and of course, my partner in crime and a good friend, our lyricist, Andrew Van Camp, and to all the pit orchestra and cast members who spent the last few weeks tireless, tirelessly recording for the show. As the crew hears me say all the time, having a pit orchestra and a cast of this caliber is truly a composer's dream. Additionally, please give us some grace tonight as we are adjusting to this new format. Since the music is pre-recorded, sometimes the video and the audio will not match up because of Zoom delays that unfortunately cannot be fixed until we have better technology. But we still hope that you'll enjoy the quality of these recordings despite the latency issues. We also plan to release a cast album on major streaming platforms in the near future, so stay tuned for that. And lastly, I wanna give a big shout out to my friend Odessa Dang, who has worked with me these last few weeks to develop a Fake Moves app that you can download on the App Store by searching Fake Moves app, where you can enjoy a virtual playbill for the show today. Thank you. Yes, please go download the program for more interesting like tidbits about the show. Veronica and Odessa did an amazing job on that. So I just want to clarify that everything you will be seeing from the actors tonight is being performed live. That includes dialogue, costumes, acting during the songs, and our amazing set changes. 
even though we're all watching from different places, I can assure you that thanks to our wonderful, wonderful cast, the energy and thrill of watching a live performance will be preserved here tonight. Our show, our show is silly and wacky, and while we had a blast being silly and wacky, I also urge you to find the relevance the story brings into your life. Um, for us, Fake Moose is not only a celebration of what Harvard is or who he may have been, but it is also a showcase of who Harvard is today. Um, we are Harvard, and by putting, to, putting our own spin on the story of good old John, um, we are each sharing our own stories, questioning some others, and building up a narrative together. We hope Fake Moose inspires you to think about and give voice to all other stories that desperately need to be told. And we hope the next time you look at the John Harvard statue, you remember that. There are an abundance of people who made this production possible that deserve to be thanked. And be sure to read through the acknowledgments in the program app you're downloading right now. A special thank you goes out to Dana Knox and Tom Morgan at the Office for the Arts. Um, Dana has been our advisor since the beginning of this project back in October, and Tom has been immensely helpful in providing all of the technical support and equipment we needed to bring this production to life. In addition, Bryce Henley helped set up the live stream we're on right now, and Arella Fleur at Northwestern University helped us in adapting the show to a virtual format. We encourage you to react to this show live and using the chat function on YouTube or the live mode in the program app. The cast will see these updates as they're coming in and they will respond to your energy. And now the moment that we have all been waiting for, please sit back, relax, and enjoy Fake Moose, the John Harvard musical. Come over here to the John Harvard statue Listen up, I'm gonna throw some exposition at you The statue is the centerpiece of campus But it harbors an interesting surprise This statue is the centerpiece of campus But this statue tells three lies the statue says John Harvard, founder, 1638. Well, John Harvard was not the founder. He was the first major donor to Harvard, which at the time was Newtown College. That's lie number one. Two, Newtown College was founded in 1636, not 1638. And three, this person here isn't even John Harvard. It's the descendant of one of the presidents of the university, President Hoare. Uh, take it easy, Grandma. That's H-O-A-R. Anyways, the administration didn't want to construct a whorehouse, so they modeled the statue after his son instead. Now comes the time for your special moment, something all Harvard visitors undergo. It brings you good luck for admissions. Everyone, rub the toe. Rub the toe. Rub the jaw, rub the jaw, oh, oh, we know. Rub your hands, rub your face, rub your kids and your iPhone case. Rub, 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 rub the jaw. I just can't stand to watch them rubbing for all to see when everybody knows that foot is covered in glee. Rub your hands, rub your face, rub your kids and your iPhone case. Rub, 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 rub the jaw. Yeah, the toe's real distracting, attention attracting. If you knew what was on it, you'd know it's detracting. So I have to ask, and no, I'm not overreacting. So Harvard, why does the statue in the center of campus where our slogan is true? Misinform and revise with its trio of lies. I mean, come on. The lies could be anything. They could be that John Harvard was a singer, a vegetarian, and a thief. Well, I'm real bored of this old story. It's going down in my blaze of glory. I've got a story to tell, a script to discard, and it's all going down. Well, I don't 
don't know Don't wanna lose my job Let's take it slow Don't listen to the snub I've got a story to tell A school to correct A tale of books and money that we need to reject I've got a story to tell A smudge to I plead From the pages of the history books you read as a teen Well I guess she's okay It's a nice enough joke And she's funny and clever and smart And she's woke And maybe going off script will get us all There are a few people you should meet. This is John Harvard. All you know about him is lies. We'll follow his struggles till the day that he dies. And this is John Sadler, Harvard's college best buddy. He was real ambitious, but also kind of cruddy. This is Catherine Yearwood, again a woman kind of thing. She is Harvard's mother, but her two husbands died of the plague. This is Oliver Cromwell, England's Lord Protector. He lays down the law and isn't an art collector. That's right, artists deserve to die. They exploit such sinful depravities of the flesh. They are ruining the good Puritan principles of this country. If you hate artists and all form of art, especially musical theatre, like I do, support me, Oliver Cromwell, in my campaign to become Lord Protector of the Realm of England. My platform is simple. First, artists. They shall be killed. Second, vegetarians. They, too, shall be killed. This one really requires no explanation. And third, thieves. No matter if they steal your house, your cow, your wife, or your life, they shall be killed. As I said, my name is Lord Oliver Cromwell, and I am... Wait, I wasn't finished. We've got a story to tell, lines to say. If we need any more characters, we'll meet them on the way. We've got a story to tell, a sellout to uncover. Our story begins in 1637 in the idyllic English countryside just outside of London. There, in a little cottage on a little farm, lived a couple by the name of Harvard. The man's name was John, and he was a pastor, and his wife was Anne. In the year they had been married, neither of them had died, which was a pretty big deal back then, almost as much as it is now. <sighs> As a result, theirs was a life as peaceful and uncomplicated as you- John! John Harvard, you no good son of a butcher! Where are you? Ah, mother! What a pleasant surprise. Catherine, how good to see you. We were just enjoying a cup of tea. Yes, would you care to join our peaceful and uncomplicated tea I time? I don't have the time for tea time! Have you, John, heard of his fellow Oliver Cromwell? Oh, that, that crazy Puritan? Oh, yes, he is, isn't he? He makes me so crazy with his, uh, his rhetoric. Uh, it just thrills me so much that such a 
charming and handsome and <laughs> sensible. Puritan has stepped up to represent us. His policies just make me want to kiss uh, my Bible. Mother, are you saying you support Cromwell? Of course I am. I went into London this week to hear him speak, and he is so dreamy. Uh, dreamy as in we share the same dream of purifying England. He's right, you know. Artists with their temptations of the flesh are making the whole country depraved. But, Catherine, doesn't this Cromwell guy want to make vegetarianism punishable by death? Precisely so. And I think it's about time. What? Mother! But John is a vegetarian. Well, have you maybe considered not being a vegetarian? <laughs> we have been over this. It's not something I can just quit. Some people are okay with the senseless, violent slaughter of cows. And I am just not. How can you still say that? You broke your father's soul, John Harvard, after that awful business. What do you call it? Ah, yes. Coming out. He was never the same. Your refusal to repent from vegetarianism is what brought the plague upon the entire family. All right, maybe we can all calm down. After all, the, the plague killed a lot of people. I just, I don't see how it could have been John's fault. And you, you're just as bad. Me? Yes, Anne, you condone his sinful behavior. You're the one who cooks his vegetables for him. I've walked by your garden, I have. What for heaven's sake is a rutabaga? Mother? If you're going to insult us, then perhaps you'd better just leave. Oh, I would think twice before threatening me if I were you, son. In fact, you should be thanking me. I'm trying to save your life before anyone else learns another one of your dirty little secrets. What's she talking about, John? What are you talking about, Mother? Well, you see, uh, when I met Cromwell in London this weekend, I might have invited him to hold one of his rallies at your church. You did what? Oh, hush, I did it for you, John. Not at all because I wanted to see his <laughs> wonderful posture again. Oliver Cromwell will be the best thing that ever happened to England. Just you wait and see. And ooh, his cheekbones. Okay, I'm done. But seriously, the man wants to put in laws against stealing. Isn't that awesome? No one's ever thought of that before. Yeah, but the rest of his platform is bogus. He has a broken moral compass. You have a broken moral compass, you cow. You're the cow. Actually, no, you're not. Because cows are very beautiful creatures. And you know what, mother? I need you to get out of my house now. John, Catherine, why don't we sit down and have some tea? Be civil. No. I can't believe you invited Cromwell to my church. You have crossed a line. Now leave. Dear now. Love, rescue my son and his wife from the spell of Satan. Take them into your mercy. Now. Well, fine. I hope you rot in hell. You too. Good day. Good day, mother. No, I'm getting the last word. <sighs> John? What? Tea? No, thank you. Um, what did your mother mean when she said another one of your secrets? What? Oh, <laughs> I don't know what she was talking about. I, I mean, you know what mother is. It's probably something you already know, so. Are you cheating on me, John Harvard? What, no, 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 no. No, okay, look, look. What mother meant was... And I'm a singer. <laughs> you're, you're kidding. No, no, I'm not. And, and that's why I hate this Cromwell guy so much. It's like he's purposefully against everything I stand for. I am living the pure written dream So repressed and restrained I could scream I just stick my head under the sand Nonconformists are not in demand I forge my butcher receipts 
Can't let on that I do not eat meat, darling Anne, you're my wife, so I pray. Hear me out, come what will, come what may. There is something in me that I need to set free, something new, something grooving and hot. There is music in me that I need to set free, but if I do, then I'm all that they're not. When I think about how hard I try To fit in with them, I can just cry I'm trying so hard to live this total lie All the time, knowing soon I will die I wanted to be like when I was a child When I sang that no one thought I was wild I can't even begin to be bold If I did, they would shout his soul, soul I've taken my vows Why should they care if I never eat cows? Put your morals and your values to bed You can't be yourself if you're dead Scared to be arrested opening the door You're not a four-year-old anymore If the bullies got wind, we'll be tired music in me I I can't believe you're in a band an <laughs> artist and a vegetarian why did you never tell me I don't know I guess the singing part was kind of embarrassing I, I was in a band in college a band <laughs> yeah uh, with your brother John what N no I'm talking about John. Who, me? No, my brother, John Sadler, who we were just oh. talking about. <laughs> I can't believe you were in a band with him. Yeah, we were whew, really bad, but we had fun. <gasps> you know what? I bet Sadler's just as bummed about this Cromwell guy as I am. If we put our heads together, we could figure out a way to get rid of him. <laughs> no, you can't do that. That's that's a horrible idea. But who's gonna stop me? I am. I forbid you to take down Cromwell. <laughs> oh, Ooh, nice one. I'm serious. I feel like you never take me seriously, but, but this is really dangerous. You're talking about Messing with someone who has almost as much power as the king, you could lose your life. Okay, okay, calm down. Look, first of all, no one is losing anything except for Cromwell and that stick up his ass. And second of all, just don't worry, I will be careful. I, I won't do anything stupid, I promise. Okay, as long as you promise. Yeah. Um. I'm gonna go work on my sermon for Sunday now. I'll yeah. see. You. Fine. I'll just be here. I'm here sweeping floors, boiling eggs, polishing doors.
about feeling overwhelmed But instead of being able to steer I am here Setting the table Give it up for Lord Oliver Cromwell, the only candidate running for the position of Lord Protector of the Realm in what is surely to be the most spectacular, definitely not rigged, and only election of this century. That was a rallying speech, if I may say so myself, Oliver. Hey, please, call me Lord Cromwell the Great, face of his name, Lord Protector of the Realm. Hmm. I'll just stick with Lord Cromwell. Isn't he great, everyone? Ah! You're so sexy! Just look at his cheekbones! A blessing I if on you my bench press me. Yes, everyone, please follow me if you'd like an autograph. Get out of my way! Sign my forehead! Me first! Please sign my baby! Sign my pecs! This is a disaster. Yeah, they're like wild animals. <laughs> Cromwell is ruining everything. My life, my family, now my church. This is all mother's fault. I can't believe she invited Cromwell and did the catering. Oh, she brought food? That's nice, right? No, she only brought meat. Oh. There's bacon and steak and meat pies that say kill vegetarians on top of them. Mother is going to pay for what she's done. I'm going to send her a letter as soon as we get home. I'm sorry, did you say a letter? Yeah, and she's going to hate it. Excuse me, Pastor. Where is the donation box for Lord Cromwell's campaign? Uh, Seems like they're here for you. I'm, I'm going to head out. No, no, and please don't leave. Mm. Uh... There, we have a box right outside, but the proceeds go to the church. That's unbelievably lame. 
What? There's a lot of water damage in the roof. Hey, Pastor, when am I going to be able to vote for Lord Cromwell? <laughs> I don't think you'll be able to, Gerald. I think that he's just going to take over Parliament by force. That's stupid. You disgust me. How are you a pastor? I went to Cambridge. Ugh, a liberal. I don't like liberals. Wow, you have made that very clear, sir. Hey, how come I've never seen you here at service before? Did you just come here for Cromwell's rally? Lord Cromwell is a prophet of the people. Lord Cromwell will deliver us to salvation. All hail, Lord Cromwell! All, All hail, 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 Lord, Lord Cromwell! Cromwell. Ooh, weirdos. John! Oh, hey, Anne. It's good to see you. Don't act so formal around your own sister. Come over here and give me a hug. Oh, we better do an elbow bump, yeah? Don't want to catch the plague. Right. Social distancing. The best. <laughs> I can't believe they used to think applesauce cured the plague. <laughs> I know, right? It's so ridiculous. Oh. No, you, you know what the most ridiculous thing is? What? John got so used to eating it that he makes me mash his applesauce for him every day for breakfast now. Like a mm. baby. No, really? Oh, I must be so hard for you. It is. Where am I going to get apples in the winter? Are you and John okay? Yes, John and I are fine. Why wouldn't John and I be? He's John. You... You just said John way too many times. Really? I didn't notice. Anyway, John is fine. John is John. <laughs> this is making me uncomfortable. Doesn't it make you uncomfortable? Being married to someone with the same name as your brother? You know what I mean? Doesn't it get awkward in bed? Extremely. <sighs> uh, well, um... I've got to go now. <laughs> it was nice catching up with you, John. My dearest brother. It's still weird. Don't you dare tell mother or father that I'm having marital problems. Oh, Anne. And don't you dare go rushing to defend my honor or anything. I know you were in a band. Hmm. Psst. Hey, Sather. What? Who is that? Oh, bugger. I knew I shouldn't have taken money from that Russian man. It's what I get for doing that. Wait, what? No, no, relax. Buddy, it's me. Oh, John Harvard. Hey. <laughs> we were just uh, not talking about you. Who's we? Oh, um, just me and a lovely lady who's definitely not your sister and who's definitely not unhappily married to you. Em? Wait, wait, Anne told you she was unhappy? No, um, it was definitely not heavily implied in the conversation that we definitely did not just have. Oh, God, I should stop talking. Was it you who told her about our band? Oh, I, I, I had to, Sadler, I, I'm so sorry. Oh, God, oh no, John, why would you do that? I, I can't have people knowing that I was in a band, especially now with everything that's going on with Cromwell. Just, just hang on, relax, please, just relax, Sadler. Anne and I have been having some disagreements lately, and that's actually what I wanted to talk to you about. Well, if it's a divorce attorney you're looking for, I can't do that for you. In fact, I bet our university mates a bloody lot of money that you and Anne would live happily ever after and die in each other's arms on a snowy winter's eve. That is, after you both caught the plague. No, what? No, no. Just, li Sadler, just li listen, listen, okay? The reason I was telling Anne about our band was because I was thinking about getting the band back together. And... She disagreed with me. I sure hope she did. No, please, just hear me out. I, I can't just 
sit around and let Cromwell ruin this country and other people's lives. But look, I have spent my whole life hiding who I am. And that hasn't been ideal, not speaking up about it. But now I can't just sit around and watch as it keeps getting worse and people's lives are being threatened. I am living the pure written dream. Glad to hear roles as good as it seems. No, it's not, Adler. Life's not good anymore. The, the Puritan dream sucks. There's something I have to say, and I want you to say it with me. There is something in me that I need to set free. Something new, something you will find swell. There is music in me that I need to set free. Predestination, right? It will make me go to hell. I'm not exactly dropping a bomb. Shell when I say this cannot make it back to Cromwell. Let me make this very clear. If they knew I know this, it would end my whole career. Wait, what are you talking about, Sadler? What career? I thought you knew. I work for Lord Cromwell now. I'm his secretary. <laughs> I didn't realize you'd gotten so funny, Sadler. Harvard, stop. I I'm serious. It, it was a great opportunity for me to advance my career, so I took it. I know it's Cromwell, and <laughs> he'd probably bed me if he found out I used to be in a band, but He's actually not such a bad guy once you get to know him. Right. I mean, he's gonna make stealing illegal, finally. Right. So, you wouldn't happen to be on board if I said that I wanted to get the band back together so that we could start an anti cromwell campaign and take him down, would you? Oh, no! Oh, I can't believe you're going to say that. Yeah, I figured. It was worth a try, though. I shouldn't even be speaking to you right now, Harvard. In fact, my job requires that I turn you in. But you're not going to do that, right? No, of course. Of course not. We're good mates. <laughs> <laughs> but, listen... You have got to give up on this crazy plan of yours, Harvard. If I hear you plotting against Cromwell again, I'm going to have to turn you in. I ain't going to risk letting you off scot-free a second time, you hear me? <sighs> you see, I'm up for this promotion. And the guy going against me, Thomas Allen, is Cromwell's top investigator. Ugh. He just has so many muscles. And I bet Cromwell thinks that makes him more qualified than me. No, no, Sadler, no. Look, I'm sure you'll get the promotion. You're really good at doing what politicians do. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Your sermon was bloody well done, too. Thank you. Hey, you wouldn't still happen to be in touch with Bertha, right? Bertha? The, the drum in our band? Yeah. Are you kidding? It's my job to be in touch. <laughs> yeah. This is her address, which I'm giving to you under full confidence that you're not going to ask her to get the band back together, okay? Oh, yeah, no, no, of course, of course. Uh, I will definitely not be using this to get in contact with her and ask for her help in bringing Cromwell down. Oh, come on, man. What? I said I wasn't going to. All right. I better go find Lord Cromwell. It was nice exchanging completely legal pleasantries with uh, you, Harvard. No, of course, of course. Uh, you as well, Sadler. All right. Safe travels. See you later. Wait. That was another successful rally for the books. Yes, you look quite glamorous up there, Lord Cromwell, but. Not too flashy, still very approachable. I think the people adored you. Yes, well, how could they not? I'm amazing. You are, my lord. How are my cheekbones looking? They did a lot of work for me today. Um, just as sculpted as ever, my lord. Good, good. 
Say, Sadman, yeah. what do you think of this pastor Harvard character? What do I think of him? Yes, yes, that's what I said. Were you not listening to me? No, I, I, I mean, yes, yes, I am paying attention, yes. Because you know it makes me very, very, very sad when people only pretend to pay attention to the very important things that I have to say! Yes, yes, Lord Cromwell, yes, I'm sorry. I have trust issues! I understand, I understand, Lord Cromwell. I, I think, I think Pastor Harvard is a great guy and he was really kind to offer his church for your rally. I think that goes to show that he's a good Puritan. Ah, but it wasn't Pastor Harvard who invited me to his church, no. no. It was his mother. Now, <laughs> there's a good Puritan. She's beautiful and therefore to be wooed. She's a woman and therefore to be won. Mm -hmm. Henry the Sixth. Yeah! Do you see why I must get rid of all art now? Hmm? It invokes such lustful desires, such unspeakable, un uh, Puritan desires. Hmm? I see. Yeah. Harvard, on the other hand, now, he was so very rude to me today. Did you did you hear? He called me all of that first. Did you notice? In the way that he spoke, I, I would think he didn't agree with my policies. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's not the case, Lord Cromwell. Then tell me what you think the case is. I, uh, I don't know. I've, I've actually got no thoughts. I, I'm illiterate. Well, I knew that, of course. But I'm beginning to think that there's something you're not telling me, Sadler. I think there's something up, something messed up. I feel so close to the truth now. I think you're holding back, you're straying from the path. That God has set before you somehow. So, John Sadler, go tell me what you know. Something's got you stressed. You're acting like a mess. You're filled with such earthly more. Oceans. John, I've got your back, just tell me where the trouble's at. I sense a decline in divine devotion, so tell me what you know. Tell me what you know. Come on, Johnny John, tell Papa Cromwell what's gone wrong. Spill the beans, tell me what you know. Don't want to be mean, just tell me what you know. Wouldn't want to grab the arm screws. Wouldn't want to have to go. You get a clue. Tell me what you know. Tell me what you know. Wouldn't want to try some kung fu. Wouldn't want to do some voodoo. Just pull the through. Tell me what you know. Tell me what you know. Wouldn't want to have to peel you. Like an apple to reveal you. Remove the skin. Wouldn't feel a thing, well, maybe a pinch. Peeling, peeling till you know what. All that's left is a pile of guts, like some day pass low qual cold cuts. Okay, 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 all right. I'll tell you. <laughs> For the record, we were not just kissing just then. No, no, never. I know that many of you are probably thinking that because your your brains have gone fetid with the consumption of art. Mm hmm Anyways, that sinful son of a butcher Harvard must be arrested at once. Wait, Lord Cromwell. Officer Sturston, Officer Watlock! 
You've just been jerzened. Oh! Let's go, what, what are you doing? How was that for an entrance? Uh, I don't know. I think it's still missing something. What do you mean? I worked on that all afternoon. When, when you should have been doing your jobs, guarding my offices from assassins, you were doing this little number right oh, here. Oh, 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 I got it. I don't get it. Like, what is a sure sin? What does it mean to be shersoned? You are so stupid. Sadland, do not listen to me. Make them listen to me. Perhaps, Lord Cromwell, we could rethink Harvard's arrest. Did somebody say arrest? No. We love making arrests. We're super good at them. Yeah, on our resume, it says last year we made 25 arrests. 2,500. He's meant to say 2,500 arrests just last year. Our resume? Do you both got the same resume? Do you? So, you do appear to be the right man for the job. Well, good. I was beginning to have my doubts. No, my lord. We are more than prepared to bring your man to justice. Who is he? Sadler will tell you. Now, watch me as I leave. Wait, wait, wait. Who's Sadler? It's obviously this guy. All right, Mr. Saddleman. What do you have to tell us? You both are to arrest Pastor John Harvard of Southwark, Surrey, for his crimes of conspiracy, breach of peace, vegetarianism, and pro-art rhetoric. You will find him here at this address. Please, try not to fail. <laughs> Why would we fail? We've arrested millions of people. 2,500 people, major hardened criminals, so many murderers. Okay, he's gone. We've never made an arrest. What do we do? Uh, I guess we could start by going to his house? No, that's stupid. We should start by going to his house. What a great idea. Man, I'm glad Cromwell trusted us to do this job. He's always giving the most important stuff to Thomas Allen. <laughs> Thomas Allen, I can sing a song to his muscles. No, we don't like Thomas Allen, remember? He made fun of us the whole time we were at the police academy together. He stole all the credit for our work. But Sherson, when you look like Mr. Muscle Man, nobody cares if you're a good guy or a bad guy. They're just focused on your muscles. <laughs> Thomas Allen can steal this case from us right now and I wouldn't even be mad. Stop, Watlock. I think we're here. Oh, Lordy. And now remember, this could be a very dangerous guy we're dealing with here. But we need to be prepared. Do you have your pepper spray? It's right here. Okay, we're going in. Open up, it's the police. Good morning, officers. Uh... Is something wrong with your face? No, something's wrong with your face. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Should I use the pepper spray now, Sherson? What? No, listen, ma'am. We're looking for a dangerous fellow. His name is John Harvard. He's committed multiple crimes and we need to take him into custody. We were told his last known address was near here. Oh. In that case, <laughs> come on in officers. <laughs> Thank you, may we have some tea? Tea time is over, I'm sorry, but you're too late, John just left. Do you have Earl Grey? It's my favorite. What lock? Hey. I apologize for him, ma'am. Now, what were you saying about Harvard? He left a few minutes ago. You've actually just missed him. Oh, well, that's a relief. He's a very dangerous man. You're lucky he didn't hurt you. We should go after him, Sherson. He can't have gotten far. No, that'll never work. What we'll do instead is go after him. He can't have gotten far. I don't think so, officers. Excuse me. The door is locked and I have the key. If you want to leave, you'll have to get it from me. But, but why? John Harvard, the man you're looking for, is my husband. 
When John and I got married, we made a vow to protect each other until the day we die, as, you know, married people do. So this is me protecting him. <laughs> I have nothing against you, officers. Should I use the pepper spray now, Sure said? No, don't hurt her, Watlock. Are you mad? A little bit! This woman's being very mean. Okay, everyone just calm down. Mrs. Harvard, I know you're married. But did you seriously not feel the connection between us when we just met just now? No. Okay. Well, that hurts. Still, any chance you'd be willing to give up on your loveless marriage and run away with a me? I got it, Sherson. Leave the mean woman alone. What? I got the key. How did you do that? A magician never reveals his secrets. I am so sorry for him, ma'am. Come on, Watlock. We have a criminal to arrest. No! I just have one more thing to say. Mrs. Mean Lady, you just got unwatlocked. That was so bad. Okay. But... It turns out Sather's working for Cromwell now. So he can't help me. So then I came to you. What do you say, Bertha? Should we get the band back together and show Cromwell who's boss? Ooh. Oh, I am so happy to hear that. You know, I knew you of all creatures would support me. Can I hear a song I've been working on? I feel like it's really authentic and, and it showcases all the great parts of art and vegetarianism. Ooh, ooh. Okay, okay, but, but I'll, I'll have you know that it's, it's, you know, it's not quite finished yet, so some parts might sound a little ooh. bit... Okay, 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 <clears throat> okay, Whew, here we go. When I was a child, my father was a butcher. When I looked at him, I saw something wild in his eye. He'd go out the back door, a cleaver in his right hand. Though to him it was a chore, he would make some poor cow die. And they'd be singing moo, 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 to life they're clinging. Moo, 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 next he's bringing. Body slinging, death he's bringing. That haunting melody swept through me at night, and when all the cows would die, I woke with a fright. told us your crimes, but we can't remember them. Mr. Saddleman? Sadler? Sadler told you to arrest me? No Ooh. more questions. You're coming with us, buddy, to jail. You just got sure sinned. 
still not working. Stop! Stop! I won't let you take him without saying I tried. And <laughs> we're not going to let him go. Okay, I tried. And? You promised me you wouldn't try to plot against Cromwell. You lied to me and you betrayed my trust and I'm sick of mashing your applesauce. But Anne, it wasn't my fault. Oh, come on, Mr. Cowman. No, wait, no, it was Sadler. He betrayed me. <laughs> A letter from John. Perhaps he's finally come to his senses. I wonder what he's written. Ooh, perhaps. Dear Mother, I'm sorry I've been such a bad, bad, naughty son and I deserve to be flogged. <laughs> Dear Mother, I regret to inform you. He regrets to inform you. Isn't that a surprise? He may as well just swarm me with his hateful lies. But he will not push me away No, not like the plague took my Thomas away No, he will not lead me astray No matter how hard he tries I will no longer eat with you So he'll no longer eat with me That uppity son of mine refuses to heat my tea Because I brought meat to his table, you see so what am I supposed to eat? Peace? I'd really rather die! Just come and take me away Just like you took my Thomas away Clay, come quick and take me away Then perhaps my son will see that he's A spoiled little flea You have insulted me for the last time By bringing me bacon and meat pies and steak! I guess I made a mistake with the steak. I made a mistake. No longer welcome at meal times. I am no longer welcome at meal times. Well, that just seals the deal. I feel my churning stomach enzymes. He has hurt me gravely. He is such a knave. He won't let me serve him. Great. Dear God, please save me! Just come and take him away Just like you took my Thomas away Play come quick and take John away My plant-eating hellacious spawn And leave me alone whereupon The pain goes on and on and on and on and on Signed, John In ancient Greek mythology, all of our heroes had trials and tribulations to overcome. Perseus had to slay the Gorgon Medusa, Jason had to retrieve the Golden Fleece, and Hercules had to overcome 12 labors. Why am I telling you this, you wonder? Well, it's because Uncle Bert called my folklore and mythology concentration useless. <laughs> At least I'm not the one working in an airport Sephora, Uncle Bert, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <sighs> Anyways, back to the tour. This was no different for our hero, John Harvard. He had a trial to face as well. Order! Order in the court. I will now hear the case against John Harvard, pastor, son of butcher Robert Harvard. John Harvard, you have been accused of conspiracy, intended breach of peace, vegetarianism, and pro-art rhetoric. How do you plead? I plead innocent. And in the case of the latter two, I stand to argue that those are not crimes. You can't do that. It's against the rules. Oh, forgive him, Your Honor. Harvard here is, is but a lowly pastor and he's not yet acquainted with the higher practices of the law. Ugh, whatever. The defendant has entered his plea of <laughs> innocence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Opposing counsel, the burden of proof rests on your shoulders. I doubt it will be hard to prove this man's guilt. 
Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution would like to call Officer Sersen, Officer Watlock, and John Sadler to testify against the defendant. Sadler! I can't believe you'd sell me out. Oh, you are so slippery and slimy like a- Order! It is on the tip of my tongue. Oh, shut up, Mr. Cowman. Yeah, we all saw him singing to that cow, Lord Cromwell. He's an artist for sure. Oh, yes, an artist. Oh, I should have known. There's an aura of sin about him. Sada, what have you to say? Um, <clears throat> well, it was at the rally last Sunday in his church that Pastor Arvid pulled me aside and tempted me with his very firm demands that we should form a band. Now, to be clear, Pastor Harvard and I have never been in a band before. It was definitely not named Cow Juice, where our hit single was definitely not called Milk. And that definitely did not slap. Why would the defendant want to form a band with you, Sadler? Um, Pastor Harvard wanted to use the band as a vessel of propaganda opposing you, Lord Cromwell and your policies. I, I wish he believed to slander your good name. Oh, oh. Your Honor, the prosecution moves to have slander added to the list of charges against the accused, please. It is done. What? How is that not against the rules? <laughs> he just asked. <laughs> this is getting too funny. Have you never read a law book, John Harvard? Have you never watched public hangings in the square? What sort of citizen are you? I'd like to think I'm a modicum more honorable than all of you. <laughs> a modicum! <laughs> <laughs> What's a modicum? Oh, well, that just about wraps up the case. The jury should find John Harvard guilty on all counts. Well, hang on. You haven't proved the charge of vegetarianism yet. And you have no evidence for it either. So there, it's a, it's a mistrial. Sadler, can you testify without uncertainty that this man practices the sinful and unpuritan lifestyle of vegetarianism? I, I cannot. I've only heard the rumors, but I've never witnessed Pastor Harvard eat vegetables myself. Oh, damn, I guess I've lost. Oh, right! Oh, how silly, I forgot! The prosecution has one last witness, Your Honor! The lovely Catherine Rogers. <gasps> Mother? Hello, John, you no good son of a butcher. Now, Catherine, you beautiful blossom. <laughs> I have only one question for you, my dear. Oh, no need to ask Lord Cromwell. I know my answer already. You do? The answer is yes! A thousand times yes! <laughs> well, then that settles it, Your Honor. John Harvard is a vegetarian. His own mother just said so. That was quite splendid work, Counselor. Your comprehension of the law is admirable. I know, I'm amazing. Just look at the chat. Oh, may the prosecution's witnesses be excused. I'm sure they have many important things to do, like powdering my wigs, Sadler. Oh, Lord Cromwell, parting is such sweet sorrow. But I'll see you on the morrow in our wedding bed. You know what they say, fourth time's the charm. Ta! Um, let's talk sentencing, shall we? The law demands that vegetarians and artists be punished by death. Then John Harvard shall be slain like a common farm animal. Like a cow. Are there any objections from the jury? Wait! The law hasn't been passed yet. So you can't kill me because that would be against the rules. Dang it, he's actually right this time. Well, there is still one loophole we can invoke. Pardon. The clause of popular demand. Oh, very smart, very smart indeed. Members of the jury! I want to 
flay him. I want to flay him. I want to flay the same singer. I've got a nice flail. I've got a nice flail. And I think that I should bring her. So we can flay him. So we can flay him. So we can play the sinning singer. I'd rather slay him. I'd rather slay him. I'd rather slay the sinning singer. Flailing is messy. It's not a good look. I'd rather slay the singing sinner. We separate his body Ooh. from his terrible, horrible soul. His soul is soul. Oliver, Oliver, he's predestined to hell. Ne'er do well, misanthrope, call him hope. There's no hope, no, no, no hope. His soul is fraught, do as we ought. He did not, or so he thought. And slay this sinning, grinning Back from the beginning With Satan he is twinning Set our heads spinning Horrible, terrible He's simply unbearable So now let's grab a big flail And set our souls free And kill this singer for all to see! Well, it appears that by popular demand John Harvard is sentenced to death <laughs> Hello? I heard there were pirates here. I'm I'm looking for a ship. Hello? Arg matey. Take a gander, this is a lady. Arg, what you doing here, little lady? You smell like Brussels sprouts. Thank you. Um, I'm looking for a ship that will take my husband and me to America. Well, look around ya. All you be seeing are ships, I. Well, not really. That one's only half a ship, and that one just has a bunch of cats strapped to the mast instead of a sail. Uh, that one seems to be the other half of that ship, and it's eating. It's being eaten by sharks. Um, there's one over there that's just a a horse-drawn carriage, and the and the horse is. Drowning? Oh my god. Uh, don't, don't look, don't worry about it. Point is, I see very few sailable ships. Well, shiver me timbers. Do you know how to sail a lady? Of course I do. I studied it when I was younger. It was, it was all I dreamt of doing one day. Oi, we can't trust her, matey. Why not? She's a girl. Girls can't sail. That's what Captain Blackfoot taught us. He says, why bring a girl on board when there are so many young cabin boys? <laughs> um, I'm just gonna pretend I didn't hear that. Ooh. That's what we did too. Anyways, that was for the blackness in Captain's foot. Spare to his heart. He dead now. May he rest in peace. Well, I could be your captain. Good golly galoshes! Did you hear what this little lady just said? I did indeed. And you're gonna gut me for it, matey, but I think it's high time us and the crew got a new captain. You, you don't mean her? Do you see anyone else? Face it, matey. We're failures. 
We are not failures. No, don't say that. I'm, I'm sure you're very good at sailing. <laughs> but we're not. We can't even raise a sail without a cotton to tell us what to do. We can't tell the difference between gold and hermit crabs. I'm sure you'll figure it out. I'll help you. Blimey, the sharks ate our horse. Oh, now what are we going to do for dinner? Well, maybe you could ask me. I'm just standing around here. Got a lot of time on my hands. Oh, what should we do? Okay, first, we've got to get some rations. Aye, aye, Captain. Aye, aye, Captain. Then, then we'll need to find a sail. And, and maybe get some locals to adopt those cats. Aye, aye, aye Captain. Aye, Captain. All right, let's get moving. We're bound for America. Aye, 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 Captain. aye, Captain. Before we send you on your way to the fiery pits of hell, do you have any last words, John Harvard? Yeah, I do. I've always been a good citizen and a good Puritan. I, I preached the word of God. I was a good husband. I treated my mother as well as I could. And I ignored it when everything wasn't fair. When people discriminated against vegetarians, when people called artists lazy and demented because I wanted things to stay peaceful. But I, now I can't just stand by anymore. Now Cromwell is talking about killing people just because they think differently. That may be crazy to admit to yourselves, but it's wrong. We can all see that it's wrong. <laughs> oh, you're just too cute, John Harvard. I can't take you seriously. <laughs> the court is adjourned. And, and thank God you're here. I think I'm losing my mind. No one was even listening. No one ever listens. I know, but we don't have time for this now. Your execution is tomorrow and you might be losing your mind, but I'm not going to lose my husband. I've arranged for our escape. We're going to America, John, on a pirate ship. Get your things ready, we leave tonight. What, America? As the court has decreed, so will it be. You are to be slain for your crimes against the crown. In other words, John Harvard, you are going down. He's going down, 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 down. is the best So what if John was my friend? Well Cromwell says I have been blessed I'm doing good work The artist will be gone And then after that will come A new dawn John has made a real Something has just become clear I need to clean it up Take control of my life Clean it up Not play the faithful wife You've ruined our lives here It's not exactly easy for me Here's what we'll do We'll retire to the sea I'm On a pirate After that will come a new dawn. And get a grip, take back the life you've lost.
We're taking one last stop before we depart. One last stop before our new start. My mother's house. My mother who I believed. My mother's house. My mother who deceived me. Well, let her die like the others. Let the play take her. Losing her money will surely break her. We can use the cash. I will take it back, put it right on track. I will take it back, put it right on track. I will take it well, back. Well, let her die like the others. Right let the play take her. I will take it Losing back. Losing her money will surely right break her. at Mrs. Harvard's house. The thief will be found. My finest man will ensure it. He will ask around. He will surely procure it. Catherine, you can trust it. This thief will be brought to justice. There is music in me that I need to set free. I will take it back. There is music in me there is music in me. 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 There is music in me.
Hi, everyone. My name is Caleb Shee, and I am the music director of Fake Moves, the John Harvard musical. We are so thrilled that you have chosen to join us this evening and hope that you have enjoyed the first act. Obviously, we are not presenting our work in the fashion that we would have preferred. However, we are extremely excited to be able to present the amazing accomplishments of the company of Fake Moves in such a novel way. Our new medium has forced us to rethink both the preparation and the presentation of the music in this show. One of these adaptations was the use of pre-recorded music during this performance, as you have already seen and heard. Additionally, our concept of the music rehearsal was completely turned upside down as we contended with Wi-Fi and latency issues. But what still remains is the brilliant score of the show that our composer Veronica Leahy has composed and the beautiful performances of her score by our amazing cast members and musicians. The use of those pop, rock, and jazz genres that we recognize as modern to tell an old story serves as a reminder to us that many of the messages that these 17th century characters carry are still relevant to our lives today. The voices of each of our cast members and the sounds of each of our musicians are their contributions to our incredible story to tell. In our move to a virtual show, each of us has had to pick up additional responsibilities that we may not have anticipated. Many of our cast members are taking on tracks or roles that they were not originally casted for. Behind the scenes, many of the roles on our production team have expanded in scope. The flexibility of every member of this company has allowed fake moves to become as great as it has. This includes a group of people that you have already heard but not seen. I would like to recognize our wonderful pit orchestra that has recorded absolutely beautiful instrumental tracks and has been so flexible with the ever-changing nature of this show. At this moment, I would like to recognize Joanna Lau on flute, Tony DeFalco on drum set, Devin Gates on bass, our composer Veronica Leahy on keys and reeds, our lyricist Andrew Van Camp on cello and myself on violin as the Fake Moose Pit Orchestra. Unfortunately, Tony and Devin are not able to join us tonight, but I thank them for their beautifully done recordings. I would additionally like to recognize Veronica for engineering the recorded music that you hear tonight and Andrew for taking on the role of music rehearsal assistant on top of their original duties. Act two of Fake Moves promises to be just as wacky and funny as the first, as the Harvards continue their journey in America. Fake Moves is a project that we are all very, very proud of, so we hope that you will enjoy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Caleb, and thank you everyone out there for coming and joining us tonight. Before we return to act two, I want to highlight one other aspect of our production. One part of an in-person musical that does not transition well to Zoom is choreography. Our incredible choreographer, Kalia Chuang, developed some wonderful dances for the show and would like to take the remainder of our intermission to showcase some of her work. Please enjoy this brief medley of some of our first dance rehearsals.
Say hello to our pirate crew. We're on a boat. We're sailing on a boat. The cackle fruit goes about. Fetch the coxswain and host the sail. Hand me one of those bushels of kale. We're, We're on, on a boat. boat. We're sailing on a boat. Honey, you want to come see now? We're passing a part of sea cows. Sea cows? Ooh. We're on a boat. We're sailing on a boat. I feel kind of bad that I stole. Come on, John, it's made you whole. Who could feel bad in this breeze? Sailing the seven spectacular seas. Doing whatever I please. We're on a boat. We're sailing on a boat. Ship ahoy! <laughs> Get ready. Man the harpoons. Man the grappling hook. John, come on. Don't give me that look. I'm in his seas. A total cheater. But now I can kill some beef eaters. Attack! We're on a boat. We're sailing on a boat. Hey! Ah! Ah! My kidney! your sabers and say goodbye to these new neighbors come on lads make a final wish you will soon be feeding the fish we're on a boat we're plundering on a boat yes <laughs> my booty oh I guess I'm a thief, that is me. Was in a cage, but now I'm set free. We're on a boat, we're sailing on a boat. John, the kale ran out. Come on, dear, try some trout. Do I look like a pescatarian? To eat two more weeks, try some meat. No, I'm a vegetarian, Anne. You've turned me into a thief, and you know the crew hates singing, the, the mutiny. My vegetarianism is all that's left of me. Death to those who sing. Death to those who sing. All right, I'll do might as well eat meat. Bring the salt, pork, and a knife and fork. Land ahoy! And darling Anne, I care for you, but I am who I am. You've made me a thief, you've made me eat meat. And I can't do this anymore. This is not me, surely you see it has taken a toll. I'm not the man I used to be, but I have a new goal. John? What are you talking about, John? I'll never sing again. There's no more music in me, Anne. You took it all away. Me? How? All I tried to do was save your life! From now on, I'll only eat vegetables that grow in the dark. Because I'm in the dark, you know? What? I'll only eat vegetables that grow in the dark, you know? Because I'm in the dark, you know? I'll only eat vegetables that grow in the dark, you know? Because I'm in the dark, you know? I'll Doctor? Grow in the dark, you know? My husband hasn't been right since we arrived in America. He's, he's refusing to eat anything but root vegetables. Ah, uh, yes. I've heard of this strange affliction. Parsnips, radishes, carrots, potatoes, rutabaga, cabbages, wait, cabbages don't grow in the dark, but parsnips and radishes do. I should know, because I'm in the dark, you know. Is there anything you can do to cure it? I'm afraid there's no hope. Wait, doctor! What is this disease called? 
Veganism. Parsnips, radishes, carrots, potatoes, rutabaga. Oh, I almost forgot. You have consumption. By my best estimate, you have at most 25 minutes to live, because that's how long is left in the show, folks. Oh, me, that ship was like a in the dark, you know, because I'm in the dark, you know. I tried to stop Cromwell, you know, but I failed, you know. I stole my mother's money, you know. That wasn't very nice, you know. I'll only eat vegetables that grow in the dark, you know. Parsnips, radishes, carrots, potatoes, rutabaga, cabbages, wait. Cabbages don't grow in the dark, but parsnips and radishes do. I should know, because I'm in the dark, you know. Parsnips, radishes, carrots, rutabaga, potatoes. Oh, what have I gotten myself into? Did someone say rutabaga? Catherine, is that you? You look so... Just a... Oh, yes, I know. Someone stole all my money, and uh, now I live on that street corner over there. Oh, that's awful. Who would do something like that? I don't know, but ever since John was executed, things have gone south. Yeah, uh, and it's a shame, but... What was done had to be done, and I don't blame myself for his death. Oh, no, me neither. Oh, well, glad we're on the same, in the same pickle. Uh, see you later, Catherine. Did you just say? Um, I, I just said, uh, I'm glad we're on the same page. Listen, I've got to go now, or Cromwell will have my asparagus. Ooh, I mean, carry on. Oh, Catherine! <laughs> Can I spill the beans? Um, sure. Peas go on. I can't help but feel that I've betrayed John. Oh, thank Rua Baker. I feel the same way, Catherine. Last night, in fact, I cried myself to sleep, wondering how I could ever bear anyone's trust again. Me too. I think I let my infatuation with Cromwell get out of control. Me too. Made me forget how much I loved John. Me too. Especially when Cromwell stood me up on our wedding day. Me too. Oh, uh, you know, I just keep thinking, Catherine, how could I have been so blind this whole time? I mean, I actually love vegetables and being in that band with Harvard, well, those were some of the best years of my life. My loyalty to him should have come first over some Stupid laws Cromwell made up. I do wish John was still alive to hear us say all these nice things about him. God knows I didn't praise him enough as a child. He was oh. such a naughty boy, kept crying over all the cows losing their heads. I just... I can't believe he's gone. <coughs> Bertha? Holy cow, get it away from me! No, 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 Catherine, it's okay, it's just... It's Bertha! <laughs> oh, calm down, Bertha. She wasn't being speciesist. You know, holy cow is just an expression. <laughs> yeah, we're all friends here, Bertha. And by the way, Bertha, this is Harvard's mother, Catherine. Catherine, Bertha was the drum in our band. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Get the band back together? How are you suppose we're going to do that when our lead guitarist is, well, dead? <coughs> Harvard's not dead. <coughs> wait, 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 wait. You said that you saw him and Anne run away and board a ship to America? America? Is this cow saying what I think it's saying? Yes! Harvard's alive! I'd rather live in that filthy excuse for a colony than face his execution like a man. How can you say that? No, no. Okay, fine. My son is not dead and I'm overjoyed. Yay. Well, that's the spirit. We can make everything right again. Clear his name, bring him back home. I'm going to America right now. <laughs> All right, that sounds great, Bertha. Catherine, you coming with? Oh, no. America, gross. I'll just... I'll write John a letter. 
Perhaps I can persuade him to send me some money. If it's money you need, I can pay for your passage. Oh, no, 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 no. I'll just uh, stay right here on my street corner. These old bones aren't up for travel anymore. Okay, if you're sure. Good luck with that letter, Catherine. All right. Bertha, saddle up. We're going to America. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I know you're not a horse. It's just, well, it slipped out. Come on. We can't waste another second. I am confident that with your muscles, we'll put a swift end to those Harvards, Inspector Allen. Yes, my lord. <laughs> I'd like to see a, a demonstration of your prowess once more. <sighs> yes. Keep on flexing that delicious appendage. That's right. Now, show me your right hook. Uh, left hook. Uh, roundhouse. Uh, oh, splendid. Those conniving low lives won't know what hit him. <laughs> 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 John, you can't be vegan. How many times am I going to have to repeat myself? Being vegetarian in an anti-vegetarian country is hard enough. Being married to a vegetarian is hard enough. Well, you are married to a vegan now, so deal with it. Ugh! How can I make this any more stupidly obvious to you? We are fugitives. We need to blend in and not attract any unwanted attention. You are doing the complete opposite of that. I can't help it. This is who I am now. This is who I've become. Fine. Fine. You just wait and see. When Cromwell sends his top dog detective after you, he's going to sniff you out like a steak. Why would you say the F word? Little did Anne know that the steak had hit the griddle, and her hard-won peace would prove to be so brittle. Due to the absence of her husband's acquittal, once again, their lives were interrupted in Move the middle- Move those legs, Rhonda. I can't have you slowing me down. I'm gonna be first in line when he gets off the boat. <laughs> It's not me, Bob, it's Debbie. I'm not the one who's been skimping out on the Zumba. Yeah. Oh, how dare you, Rhonda? I can't believe I was going to let you stroke his bicep first. Huh. Oh my God, you would not believe who just got here today. Dude, I can't even believe it and I read it in the paper this morning. Yeah, you can read? Oh, he's coming, he's coming. <laughs> Thomas Allen, Thomas Allen drinks gin and grog and grease by the gallon. Thomas Allen, the best in the biz, none outwit the investigator whiz. Thomas Allen, Cromwell's pet, if you're a criminal, you'll soon have regrets. I'm looking for a thief. Stole 800 pounds. Went across the pond. Think she'll escape, but she'll soon post bond. Stole the cash from Catherine. Ah, fled the country. Said au revoir. Thomas Allen. Thomas Allen. Thomas Allen. Thomas Allen. To do my job, I scare him. I got nothing to lose. But what I want is a lady who will make the first move. So much a water hunk Trying to escape and well that ship sunk Thomas Allen, Thomas Allen, Thomas Allen, Thomas Allen I was right there after me Gonna be caught up right, gotta drink some tea Calm down and gotta stay free I need a plan Heard they've got plenty of those around here Ladies with initiative and a nice face, and a nice body, who'll come up to me first and just, I'm just, I'm just tired of being lonely all the time. I know what I'll do to avoid being captured. I need to keep Alan totally enraptured. What have I got? Writing skills, no, I've got to give him more womanly thrills. I need to 
take control of my introduction Won't let him capture me, it'll be a seduction Hey Thomas Allen, hey I don't even know what to say I'm such a huge fan And you are really such a handsome man Thomas Allen, Thomas Allen I'm talking to you Me? Who? Yes, you I have just one wish I want you to ravish me Come with me to the butcher shop, my sweet we can really talk midst all that me. Wow. Wow. Look, you make me feel like nothing will ever make sense anymore. But like, all at once, everything makes sense. And at the same time, nothing has ever made sense before you. Um... What? Look, please, will you marry me? Oh no, oh no, did I do something wrong? Look, you need to see more of my, uh, my muscles? Here, look. Is this better? No, 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 it's just... We're moving really fast, don't you think? <laughs> what is going on here? And what are you doing with this extremely muscular man? This isn't what it looks like. <laughs> no. What? Nah, it's not. Uh, you see, I was just asking her to marry me. I just came here from England and, well, I like to take a new wife in every country I visit. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance, Mr. Uh... Uh, his name is Han Jarvard. What? No, it's John Harvard. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Allen. Han over here is our town's resident drunkard. No, I'm not. And I'll have you know, Mr. Muscles, that is my wife you're proposing to. It's strange she didn't tell you that before you got down on one knee, since we've always had such a loving relate. Oh, I see what's happening here. That's right. Han, this man is an investigator looking for some- You're cheating on me! God, and you're, you're cheating on me in the moment that I need you the most. When did we lose our trust in each other? Was it, was it when I told you that I was a singer? I think he has had a little bit- Or was bit it when to... everyone in England wanted me dead? Or has it been from the very beginning, ever since you knew I was a vegetarian. Okay. You want to really know what it is I don't like about you? Please, enlighten me. You are such a dumbass. You never stop and think. You just get caught up in your emotions again and again. And every time you feel compelled that you have to do the right thing. Have you ever considered that maybe sometimes the right thing to do is the stupidest thing you can do and that you are being so, so stupid? Yeah, well, you're stupid too. Hmm, you know, this is all starting to sound pretty familiar. You're still here? John Harvard, singer, okay. Vegetarian, dumbass, wanted dead in England, married to a lady named Anne. Oh, <laughs> all right. I think I just cracked this case. You two are under arrest for being criminals. Uh, uh wait, I, I, I challenge you to a duel. <laughs> what? Uh, a rap duel to the death. You know, I can't believe you just said that. But I accept. Ah, I just can't resist a good duel. All right, 
Thomas Allen. I'll see you on the duel. John, are you sure about this? <sighs> Not at all. Oh, come one, come all. The grandest moment in Newtown history. I is about to be written. The first rap duel in the colonies, good men. It's about to take place here on the ground beneath our very own feet. The challenger, uh, John Harvard, deadbeat artist and vegetarian, faces off against yeah, Thomas Allen, international detective sensation. Let the rap duel begin. Yes. Yo, I'm Thomas Allen, but the gals call me magic. You, I gotta say, are kinda tragic. Like how Henry VIII beheaded Anne Boleyn, or when London caught fire around the year 1210. You call that a parry? Well, I'ma be frank. You was red as a cherry, and you about to be shanked. Put me bow, chick a pow, with this repow. Stuff with the guard and on guard, and the ow and meow. I think it's time the people of Newtown knew, but you anti-government attitude. Settings was disorder, being a defector, and maybe even murder of our Lord Protector. <gasps> so I'm saying is you better be praying before I send you to hell, where you're sure to get a flaying. Oh, I love you, Thomas Allen! Absolutely roasted! He is so literate. Oh uh, yes, Thomas Allen flex. Make me primal scream, baby. Uh John Hamilton, I mean John Harvard, your response? <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah. Thomas, there's a reason your name rhymes with villain. Wait, does it? My point is, I don't even know what you're talking about. I only thought about Cohen Cromo, never acted it out. Okay, I realize that sounds really bad, but let's move on to something less bad. I saw injustice and tried to correct it. That's my whole stick. Most people forget it. Don't kill me. That I haven't let out. I still have things to say, things to shout. Like, ah, don't stab me there. That's my throat. No, 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 no. I haven't had sea kelp yet. Sea kelp. Oi! Seems like you could use some help. Sadler. Come on, I'll be your second. Two muscles are better than one, ain't it? Even if that one muscle is just massive. All Let's right, on guard! Hi, Sadler, you really saved my life back there. I could tell. Now, let's got this mega. No, no, please, I don't want to about you. Oh, is that so? Wait, I still haven't uh, figured out how to make my pecs bounce. What? This is hard. Why do you not want me to kill him? He was about to kill you just a second ago. Yeah, but killing him won't solve anything. Just, just let him go. Okay, but I've got conditions then. Thomas Allen... You can never go back to England. And you have to cut off all communication with Cromwell, too. Yes, or else I will kill you. No, no, please don't. Let's do a test, how about? Why did you come to America? I, I heard the gyms here were, were much bigger. Okay, that's right. Oh, God, oh, God. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, just be it, Thomas Allen. Piss off. So, Shorty, you're probably wondering what I'm doing here, right? Maybe. I wasn't already wondering why everything's spinning around so fast. Harvard! Quick! We need to get him to a doctor. He's been sick for a while, and I'm afraid that rap duel must have taken its toll on him. Oh, dear. He's so white. Everyone get out of the way. Oh, 
How is he, doctor? Can you help him? No, he's going to die. Oh. I'll give you some time to say goodbye. Oh, um, I'm sure we'll get through this. You know, everything doctors say is a load of cod swallop anyway. <gasps> Harvard? <laughs> oh, thank God, you're alive! Listen, have you made a will yet? No, thank you. I don't think so. Okay, great. I'll test take yours. You what? Test state. It means to uh, write your will down. If you say so. All right. What would you like to start with? Oh, you probably don't have that much, do you? I can't imagine being a pastor pays all too well. And is there even a substantial financial asset you're afraid to lose? Well, actually, I'd like to bequeath half okay. in the sum of 780 pounds to my wife, Anne. And the other half I would like to donate <clears throat> to this great institution across the river. It's called the Mootown Institute of Technology and it's a great place for cows. Okay, I got it. I promise I will not let you down this time, buddy. Thanks. So I've been wondering, Sadler, why are you here? Oh. Well, I came to admit to you that I was wrong about Cromwell. I realized it when I felt awful about betraying you, but I should have realized it sooner. I should never have testified against you in court and I should have agreed when you asked me to get the band back together. So I came all this way to say to you that I'm sorry and to ask you something else. Bertha, you came to see me too. <laughs> well, what you say, Harvard? The old gang's all here. How about we get together and play some music like the old days? <coughs> oh, that doesn't sound too good, does it? Of course it doesn't, you idiot. How can you stand around and talk about bands now after John almost got killed by one of Cromwell's men? Oh. How dare you call me that? Um, it's okay. It's not okay. Tell me one thing that's okay. It's okay to imagine things that may never happen. So it's okay. If Sadler wants to talk about the band and what we would sing to Cromwell. Well, I can't, I can't imagine a world without you. And just imagine that I'm with you because that's where I'll be in your heart forever. No, no, I can't believe I did everything <laughs> I could to try to save your life, but you're gonna die from some, some stupid cough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bloody hell, I'm gonna lose the bet. <laughs> no, Adler, not now. And I, I just wanted you to have a little hope in me because someone had to speak, stand up and, and speak out against Cromwell. And while it didn't have to be me, and while my efforts may have been in vain or seemed worthless to you and everyone else back in England, someday they will feel a wave which will cause other bigger waves. <laughs> Someone had to start the wave, Am. 
<coughs> and I'll admit, ah, I didn't think about the consequences of my actions, how they would affect you and your dreams, and even how they would affect me. And, and I'm so sorry. see it before. I was too busy with the cows. You have a story to tell. You are the star of our show. I was so blind. I was in the dark, you know. And through it all, you cared for me. Couldn't have been easy with our reality. I just want you to start from the moment you laid eyes on me you've never stopped surprising me and there's not much that I can do now I just want you to know I just want you to know I just want you to know. No. Don't worry. I know. I know now. John, dinner's ready. Oh, come on, John. Don't dilly-dally. I've, I've made all your favourites. Look. Parsnips, radishes, potatoes, carrots, and... Rutabaga! Wow, those are my favourite vegetables. Thank you, Mother. Where are we? Oh, silly goose, you haven't figured it out yet. We're in heaven! Heaven? So that means you're dead. Yes, yes. I died penniless on the streets, trampled by the rough hands of fate. And a few horse-drawn carriages. Ouch. Yes, well. Did you get my letter while you were still alive? What letter? Oh, I guess I was too late then. Well, never mind. Let's eat. Wait, no. Mother, I... At least tell me what it said. I suppose... It expressed that I have some things to apologize for. Oh. I do too. Mother, I'm sorry for the way that I treated you. You deserved a more grateful son. Yes, I am surprised you ended up here in heaven. <laughs> did you ever hear about what Sadler did to your will? Oh, no. D do I even want to know? It's pretty amusing. <laughs> so, instead of donating your, donating your money, or should I say, my money? We can talk about that later. Agreed. <laughs> oh, instead of donating your money to Moo Town, Sadler wrote down New Town instead. 
<laughs> Isn't that funny? You messed up your dying wish. No. <laughs> no. No. So that's the story of how Newtown College became Harvard College, the pinnacle of online learning that you see here today. The college wouldn't have existed without John Harvard, their most generous donor. So they named the school after him. Now you know the story behind the man, behind the statue. Don't forget to leave a tip in the donation box. Our roof is really suffering from water damage. What is going on here? President Bacow? <laughs> All right, people, move it along now. We'll get you a, a good tour guide, don't worry. And as for you, you are going to be fired. You will never be rehired. I just want you to know, I just want you to know. You can listen to whatever you choose, but I'm here to tell you that her story's fake news, fake news. I just want you to know, I just want you to know. You can think what you want, and you might not play along. But if you want to denounce me, then prove me wrong. Fake moves. Prove me wrong. My father was a butcher when I was a child. Who are you to say the cow didn't get me riled? Make moves. We fled to find some free thought across the sea. There was something going on there, don't you agree? Prove me wrong. Fake moves. I remarried thrice for the money. I was Captain Robbins, Hobbit, and Tim Yearwood, honey. Prove me wrong. Fake. Gosh darn it, you kids never listen. We got a story, story to tell, a story to tell. To tell. A story to tell about some small things, but hear it out, it could rival those of kings. Everyone was just a person, every person had a story to tell. The next time you look at the story, story to tell, and see John Harvard sitting a story to tell. Music in me. We are departing now. We're leaving you all on the marble steps of Harvard University Hall. If you like the tour, my name is Anne, or really Catherine Yearwood, if you weren't a fan. There is music in me. There is music in me. There is music in me. Prove us wrong. Prove us wrong.